Good afternoon. This Sunday, during worship, we're going to celebrate the Sacrament of Communion, which is sometimes called the Lord's Supper or the Eucharist, and our Roman Catholic friends call it Mass. Now, Communion this Sunday will be particularly meaningful because the first Sunday of October is known as World Communion Sunday, the day that we set aside for Christians around the world of all sorts and shapes to share in this sacrament together. Doing this is a sign of our unity, that we are all people of Jesus Christ who look to him for our salvation. And that's appropriate because the name communion, after all, literally means to have intimate fellowship. So we are having communion, we're having intimate fellowship with one another, and we're, as we are having communion or intimate fellowship with Jesus Christ. However, even though we are united by our faith in Jesus Christ, we understand this sacrament in different ways. We believe that Christ is present with us as we share the sacrament, but we have different ideas about exactly how he is present. For example, our Roman Catholic friends believe in what is called transubstantiation, that the bread and the juice, or bread and wine, literally become the body and blood of Jesus Christ. They might still look and taste like bread and juice or wine, but the substance has been changed. Our Lutheran friends believe in what is called consubstantiation, which is slightly different. For them, it is still bread and juice or wine, but Christ is present in, with, and under those elements. Christ's presence comes to us with the physical elements of the sacrament. Others, such as, for example, Baptists, believe in a that the sacrament is a memorial. Christ isn't actually present as we share the sacrament, except in the memory and the thoughts of those who share it. Now, this is a brief description of what some other types of Christians believe about the sacrament, and I suspect that those who believe in these different ways would find ways to correct this, but I'm hoping that I can give at least a quick explanation. Now, we Presbyterians believe something different. We believe Christ is present, but he is not physically present. For us, communion is best understood as a mystical experience. Now, mysticism might sound kind of creepy or even intimidating. When we think of mystics, we think of people who live in caves on mountaintops or in monasteries. We think of mystics as people who go into deep trances and see visions that are far beyond what the typical person experiences. And that certainly is one sort of mysticism. But we Presbyterians believe in another as well. We believe that our spirits encounter the living presence of God in something as simple as the bread and the cup that we share. We recognize, we encounter, we experience the presence of Jesus Christ himself as we are gathered as a church to share in this sacrament. It is as if we are transported into heaven itself to be in Christ's presence when we share the sacrament. For us, transubstantiation or consubstantiation are attempts to make material what is physical. After all, as Jesus once said, God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. So we believe that we are closest to God when our spirit is drawn into his spirit. And it doesn't matter where we are physically or what is physically with us. Our Presbyterian Book of Order, part of our Constitution, puts it this way. In this meal, the Church celebrates the joyful feast of the people of God and anticipates the great banquet and marriage supper of the Lamb. Brought by the Holy Spirit into Christ's presence, the Church eagerly expects and prays for the day when Christ shall come in glory and God be all in all. And one of our statements of faith, the Heidelberg Catechism, puts it this way. Through the Holy Spirit, who lives both in Christ and in us, we are united more and more into Christ's blessed body, 
when we share the sacrament. Here's another way to look at it. There's two kinds of eating. There is physical eating, which is what we're most familiar with, you know, over the lips and past the gums, look out stomach, here it comes. But there's also spiritual eating, which nourishes our spirits the same way that physical food nourishes our bodies. Now, am I saying that the Presbyterians are right and everyone else is wrong? <laughs> of course not. Because the meaning of this sacrament goes beyond what any human explanation can capture. I'm simply explaining what, for us Presbyterians, seems to make the most sense for us. But whatever this sacrament means for you, I look forward to meeting you at Christ's table this coming Sunday, whether you're with us physically or you're at another church. Would you pray with me, please? Lord God, we are grateful that you have given us the gift of this sacrament, a way in which we can be united to you and united with one another as we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk again later.